Next, it's my pleasure to introduce um, Dr. Seba um, Dr. Jorge Sebastian and um, his colleague Alicia Martinez. Um, Dr. Sebastian um, is assistant professor in the Department of Art History at the Universidad de Valencia, where he teaches art history at the graduate and undergraduate level. Mr. Martinez holds an art MA in cultural heritage management from the Universidad de Valencia. Today, they will speak to us on the Silk Now project. Their talk is entitled, Close and Distant Viewing of Silk Textiles, a case study in online research. Hello, uh, good morning, everyone. Well, first of all, we want to thank the organization for inviting us to participate in this symposium uh, and all the audience for, for your attention. Since uh, the topic for this series is uh, technological revolution, we want to share a concrete vision on how we art historians have uh, developed some answers in our research, thanks to digital tools. For instance, uh, different kinds of scholars have begun by asking how an object has been made or altered. That is, we have uh, always been interested in techniques. Form and analysis is uh, just another avenue for art historical research one that constitutes the, uh, the core of uh, the discipline for generations. Historical heritage kept in uh, museums and collections require preservation and often this begun by careful study and cataloging their objects. Subsequently, this became the main focus of our historian working for memory collecting institutions. In turn, these tasks required accurate cataloging methodologies. Among them, the usage of a proper standardized uh, termi terminology, another field for disciplinary efforts. The images you are seeing refer to this set of uh, questions, techniques, forms, and cataloging within our field of uh, textile history. All of this does not sound particularly revolutionary, since, in fact, these are traditional questions and tasks for mainstream art history. Our first point is that by beginning from such a set of established methods, digital technologies can sometimes be a great uh, aid in finding answers or putting hypotheses to the test. Sig Heritage is uh, particularly a good case in point. The production, trade, and consumption of silk textiles had paramount importance during many historical periods. European history is woven in silk through countless kinds of objects, practices, and communities. What might come first to mind are the luxurious clothes worn by the royalty and the nobility, such as um, in this famous portrait of uh, Roncino that you are seeing now. Nevertheless, in some places, uh, that heritage is kept alive through celebrations and popular culture, such as in the Fallas Festival held here in Valencia every year. On this occasion, thousands of people wearing traditional clothes made of silk parade on the streets. Of course, this requires keeping alive some craft that otherwise are in serious danger of uh, disappearing. Thus, such kind of work does not deal only with objects, but for, uh, must focus on intangible heritage as well. Our research project, named Sigil Now, tries to offer answers to some of the previous questions. It is a consortium uh, funded by the European Commission that includes nine partners from six different countries. We came from diverse backgrounds, information and communication technologies, art and humanities, creative industry, whatever. Mostly, it is a collaboration among art historians and computer scientists. We collaborate also with small and medium-sized museums that have textiles in their collections. There are many of these museums, and usually uh, they lack the scale, the funding, and the technological know-how to take advantage of the latest digital tools. So now I uh, will give the floor to my colleague, uh, Jorge, that we continue with uh, the presentation. Thank you, Eliseo. 
So as you can see, uh, we are applying both uh, traditional and new approaches to the history of textiles. In both cases, using online digital tools when they are available and can prove useful. Of course, we are not interested in using technology for the sake of technology, but for problem solving. Let me briefly introduce each of those tools. They are still in beta status. And in fact, we are interested in, in getting feedback from testers. So please get in touch with us if you are interested. Some of these tools are related uh, to an attentive, close look at the objects or the data. Some others are more focused on the aggregation and analysis of large amounts of information with tasks that were hardly possible before the advent of digital humanities. Those two approaches have been labeled close and distant viewing, following the work done in literary criticism by Franco Moretti. One first example, as regards the viewing of details, textile experts usually analyze the weaving techniques thanks to thread counter magnifiers, such as the one you see on the screen, or photographs that show the yarns in extreme close up. We wondered how historical textiles would look if we could digitally recreate and then change the way they had been woven. For instance, transforming a twill into a tabby or changing the original colors of the warps with other combinations, historical or more recent ones. Developing an online virtual loom, such as the illustrations you are seeing on your right, is allowing us to experiment with these kind of close views that are also very useful for pedagogical purposes. Moving from images to textual descriptions, the catalogs of museum collections contain huge amounts of information. However, if we want to broaden our focus beyond individual institutions, soon we will face important interoperability problems. Among them, the technical vocabulary, the diversity of languages, and the varying cataloging practices. A first way to address that diversity has been the careful preparation of a specialized thesaurus of silk-related terms in four languages. It is a traditional kind of resource, a case of very close reading of historical sources, but also a necessary basis for distant reading approaches that require data interoperability, multilingual queries, and eventually can lead to information discovery and textual analysis through artificial intelligence. At the same time, however, information within collection catalogs can have very uneven quality. Sometimes they may be very short, they, have been, they may have been prepared decades ago, and a scholarly opinion may have changed since then. Could artificial intelligence systems help with records that are hardly informative or outdated, etc.? Well, first, those artificial intelligence systems need to be trained on massive amounts of existing data. Afterwards, they can be asked to propose missing data or to point at unforeseen similarities with other text records of images. What you are seeing on the screen, and I know it's not particularly informative, it's one of the tests we are running of clustering those images by a number of categories, among them obviously here color. In this way, automated annotation of existing records may be built on top of a traditional resource via a combination of close and distant reading. Of course, there is a whole range of difficult issues here, not least among them defining what similarity means or being able to model it digitally into clear parameters. Of course, it is essential to let the user know what content is curated by a human expert and what is only suggested by a machine. But all of these nuances can, of course, be properly handled. 3D printing, we have partnered with other educational institutions and also small companies putting heritage closer to, among other things, art and design schools, as well as creative industries. That's again a very much uh, of a traditional approach at the heart of the creation of so many decorative, decorative arts museums in the 19th century. But now it's brought to light through new technologies. We see 3D printing and you see here one illustration about printing with textiles and other printing with the jewelry. 
we see 3D printing as a bridge technology between historical sources and contemporary creative tools. We are experimenting with printers that, well, and designers that recover historical designs for textiles and apply them to a number of different supports in collaboration with design schools. Finally, research is leading us towards outreach. Despite their great historical importance, textiles are a fragile heritage, both for material and for institutional reasons. The objects and the associated intangible heritage of crafts, techniques, traditions, and settings for their production, trade, and consumption are seriously in danger. This is not yet a part of our current project, but we see as, as the next one. There are hundreds of unknown and uncatalogued sets of perforated cardboards, what you see on the left, that's hundreds and, and meters and meters of cardboards stitched together, made for use in jacquard looms, which as you will know is the forerunners, are the forerunners of modern computers. Weaving those designs is too complex and too costly. However, we would like to scan and digitize them and these would, of course, be useful for two purposes. One of them for traditional industries, this would help them in the process of cloning and replacing cardboard pieces that deteriorate with time and usage. Uh, secondly, and for them, for those industries, and for many other users, including prospective clients, this would, be, this, would, this would give them the opportunity to view how would a historical design look once it's woven, changing colors, or some small details. So, as you can see here, I mean, there are many different avenues that can be explored in this crossroads between art history and technology. We'll leave it here, but we will be very happy to promote more, to provide more information afterwards. So, um, again, thank you very much for, for your attention.